Hey folks, on Soft Plastics 101 this week, we're going to cover a topic that you guys have asked for. So, the series has been well received, we've enjoyed putting it together, but we've had quite a few inquiries about what is the right rod and reel to fish soft plastics with. And it is a bit of a tricky one because there's lots of different species, environments, etc. But we thought we'd hit the basics and just run you through a few rods and reels for soft plastics fishing. So the biggest thing I think I come across is when guys get into my boat to have a fish with me and they've got a, a heavy, soft fiberglass rod and monofilament line on their reel. So straight away you're on the back foot. It's difficult to feel what's going on with the plastic. It's difficult to get the casting distance and also to feel those bites. Reason being that soft rod dampens the feel of what's going on. And also the monofilament line has a lot of stretch and it's also generally thicker. So the problem is you're not being able to drive that plastic effectively and you're not being able to feel those subtle touches and bites and whether your soft plastic is swimming properly. So firstly, I would say get yourself a graphite rod or a graphite composite rod, nice and crisp, more feel. They may feel a little bit stiffer than your old fiberglass rod when you first pick them up, but you'll find that responsiveness is what helps you to drive the plastic and also feel what's going on in terms of action with the fish biting. So for starters, we might go a, a one to three kilo or a two to four kilo rod is a good starting point for brim and bass and those more light soft plastics target species like trout. So one to three kilo. So we've got our nice graphite rod here. This is a Seros one to three Akuma. So it's a nice rod for flicking light weighted plastics. And I might put a 20 size reel on that rod. And that's a good starting point for that light line fishing. In terms of line, we are fishing braided line. Braided line is much thinner than mono, which allows you to cast your plastics further. And being thinner, it's also got less drag. So you can get that plastic down into the water column a lot easier with less drag. And it also has less stretch. And by having less stretch, it means that it's, it's much more responsive. It's got much more feel. So if you go hop, hop, that transfers through your braid to the plastic, hop, hop, and your plastic moves. Likewise, the, on the other way around, when the fish grabs it or taps it, it also transfers much better through to your hand, through that graphite rod, that braided line, and you feel that touch, you feel that tap from the fish, and you can speed up, slow down, set the hook, whatever you need to do. So braided line on a graphite or graphite composite rod. One to three kilo, two to four kilo, a great starting point for that lighter plastics fishing. Step up to around a three to six kilo is popular. So I've got a Seros medium here, seven footer, and that's a beautiful rod. I love it for a bit heavier weights, getting up around a quarter, three eight, half ounce plastics for flathead, chasing bass, uh, all of those general estuary type species, that three to six kilo is a, is a great rod for that. Uh, braid wise, on our lightweight one, I should have told you that, on our lightweight rod, braid wise, we want to keep it nice and light. So you might go four pound, six pound, eight pound braid, um, even down to lighter than that. And then leader wise, depends on species, but a lot of the time you're fishing around that eight pound leader. You might go down as far as two pound leader if it's crystal clear on the flats and the brim are a bit spooky. And you may step up to 10 or 12 pound leader if, if you're fishing structure or you're fishing fish that have got raspy mounds. So that's our light combo. On our three to six that we were talking about, braid wise, we had eight pound on there. But again, you may go up or down from that six or eight pound, depending on the target species in the environment that you're fishing. Leader wise, very much the same. So I often fish a 10 pound or a 12 pound leader for flathead because they've got those raspy plates in their mouth. You may go lighter than that for a finicky bass bite. And if you're chasing jacks, you may step up if you're fishing around structure up to that 20 pound or so. But 10 pound braid on a 30 size reel is a good starting point on that three to six kilo seven foot spin stick. Seven foot's a good starting point across all of these weights because it gives you casting distance and control when you're fishing. And then from there, we might step up to this rod here. This is a heavy. So somewhere around that five plus kilo, five to eight, five to 10 kilo rod is a nice when you get into bigger snapper fishing, mulloway fishing, chasing bigger trevally, barra, those sorts of species. And again, we've got that sensitivity and feel of that graphite or graphite composite blank. Braid wise, 20 to 30 pound is good. Braid's nice and thin, so you can still fit a lot on there and it still feels nice, still casts well. But 20 to 30 pound braid gives you plenty of stopping power 
and then leader wise very much when you get to this size depends on your target species so you may be still fishing down around 15 to 20 pound for snapper but when you get into barra country those guys are capable of destroying leaders so you might may find yourself up around that 60 or 80 pound leader so there you go that's some basics across choosing a rod and reel the main thing is start around that seven foot is a good starting point one to three two to four for the lighter weight stuff three to six if you want a bit bit more grunt in the estuaries and impoundments chasing bigger fish and then up to that five to eight five to ten kilo once you get to snap a mull away and those larger species stick with that graphite or graphite composite check out the braided line and then finally leader choice fluorocarbon leader is extremely popular Fluorocarbon is a material that has the same light refraction qualities as water. So they say it becomes virtually invisible in water. It also sinks, which aids you when you're plastics fishing, because you can stay in touch with that plastic better as it sinks, and away you go. And it's also got awesome abrasion resistance to stop those fish biting you off a bit more effectively. So that's fluorocarbon leader. Check out fluorocarbon leader. And most people will run just a rod length of leader when they're fishing with plastics and that leader gives you the shock absorption also is harder for the fish to see the only time that i'll switch to a mono leader <coughs> is if i'm fishing surface plastics so because that leader sinks the fluorocarbon it can pull your surface plastics underwater so in that case you're better off with a monofilament leader because it will float more effectively when you're fishing those surface plastics so there you go a lot in there watch it a couple of times go choose yourself an awesome rod to get out there and chase a few fish on plastics it really does give you a lot more control of the plastics a lot more feel of what's going on and i hope it gets you hooked up into a few more fish as well so there you go soft plastics 101 we'll see you on the water